Kia ora. Welcome to Alfred's Stream here in Rye Valley, beautiful Marlborough. I'm Antonio O'Donnell for Conservation Kids New Zealand and I'm part of the Rye Valley Catchment Group. I'm here with Wendy Sullivan from New Zealand Land Care Trust. The Rye Valley Catchment Group is part of the Tuhori Polaris Restoration Project, an exemplar catchment that is a collection of landowner agencies, iwi and other stakeholders all working together to enhance the environment of Tahuri Polaris area. So a key part of being in a catchment group is having an understanding of all the environmental issues throughout the whole catchment and then participating in any solutions that are needed. And a part of that is to be able to go and collect data. So if you can collect your own data, it gives you the knowledge to then be part of that solution and know what to do and be in control of what to do. We formed the Rye Valley Community Stream Health Project to help give local families the opportunity to learn how to measure the health of their streams around them. Our families have been monitoring the streams every season for a year, so they are pretty knowledgeable about its health. So put your gum boots on and we're going to go and show you what they've learnt. So why are we down here in the stream this morning? I'm looking for macroinvertebrates and they are a good indicator of the health of the stream. So do we have good macroinvertebrates in here? Yes, we do. And why? How can we tell that? Because lots of them have legs, or most of them. So if we've got bugs with legs, that's a good sign? Yep, that's a very good sign. But if you don't, it's a bad sign. And it's a bad sign because it's showing that the water is polluted. Yep. Oh, I see. So something like a snail can live in polluted stream. Yep. But these toe biters, these dobs and flies, they like fresh water. Very nice cold water and fresh water, yeah. I got one. My brother's got one. So Amy, what are we doing here today? Uh, we are here to plant some more trees to make this water more cool for the environment and awesome. habitat of fish. And are we going to do some water testing to see what the temperature is? Ah, uh, yes, yes. So can you show me, Amy, how we test the water and just let me know why you're putting it there? Um, we put it in the ripple because it's probably the best and must keep it at least here. And leave it in for 10 to 15 seconds. So what is the optimal temperature of the water that we're looking for? Um, in between 10 or 15 degrees. What's it looking like today? Um, 11. 11? So that's pretty good, isn't it? Yes. So is there a reason that um, we want the water to be cooler than warmer? Yes, it helps a fish survive a lot better because the more cool habitat is a lot better for the fish. A lot better, better oxygen in there? Yes. Awesome. So if we want to try and cool this stream down, what can we do to help cool it down? Um, like we're doing today, we're planting some trees and some flax. Flax will also curve down the bank and make a better little cool habitat for the fish. Oh, fantastic. Good job. Oh yeah, I was So you put five mils of water in each one. Uh, it's 
closest to this one. What number is that? Point two. What is nitrate, Wendy? Well, nitrate's a product that the farmers apply to their paddocks to help the grass grow. But where it becomes a problem is if there's no vegetative buffer between the paddock and the waterway, in the heavy rain the nitrate will wash through and over the soil into the water. How does that harm the stream? Um, well, if you can see all the macrophytes growing on the stream edge, mm -hmm. um, those react the same way as grass in the paddock when they get a dose of nitrogen. So they, it would grow so thick and dense it would take over the whole waterway and block the flow of the stream. Does that affect the oxygen for the animals? Well, it would, yes, because um, when the plants decay, it would then um, absorb the, the oxygen out of the water. So yeah, it would take the oxygen out of the water, exactly. And, I, and it would also, um, just by clogging up the stream, it, it would take away the habitat for the fish and the invertebrates. You can see this stream is really good because there's a wide vegetative buffer of rank grass, which is capturing the nitrate, and the farmer is planting as well, which, which um, also means that the nitrate won't get into the water and the water will stay healthy and clean. So how does that compare to the other times that you've monitored the stream? Um, that means it's gone murkier. Gone murkier? Ah. Yeah, and because we had to use that, because we could see it right at the end. Yeah, I think you're right. So what's that doing to the creatures that live in the stream, having all this murkiness and sediment in the water? Um, well, it'll make it murkier for them to see food and it might the dirt might block up their gills a bit, if it's like a fish or something. Yeah. Which I saw a couple of bully going around there, which I think is a good sign if we see fish. What would you do if you don't have one of these to test the clear water? Well, that's a very good question because I can guarantee you most people don't have one of those, but what most people have are jars at home. So what you can do is fill up one jar with water out of your kitchen um, tap, which hopefully is clean, and then fill up the other jar with water from the stream. And just by comparing the colours, you can get an idea if the stream is slightly dirty or not. So this is the stream water, and that looks a bit, that looks a bit murkier than the tap water. Yeah. My name's Marcus and I'm 10. My name's Mika and I'm 9. We are doing a water testing to see if the stream's healthy and to see if there's anything living in it. The last two days, in the last 48 hours, what sort of rainfall has there been? Is none. It, none? Yeah, none. And then is this normal water level, is this high or low or slightly raised? Low. Yeah, it's really low for this stream, isn't it? Mm. So then what we're going to do next is we're going to do a site health check. So Mika, you can ask Marcus these questions and he can have a look. What, is, what does it smell like, Marcus? Is it nothing unusual? Sewage? Marcus. Petrol? <laughs> The rate of flow, is it fast, slow or none? I don't think it would be slow, but I don't think it would be fast. It's, what do you think it is compared to last time we were down here? Well, it, it, it has slowed down a bit. Last time it was just... 
what is on top of the water surface. Nothing unusual, oily film, foam, slime, algae or scum. Nothing unusual. There's nothing on there. See anything. Can you see anything oily on top? No. no but there's a few leaves. Yeah, there's a few leaves. I think it's nothing unusual, isn't it? Yeah, yeah nothing so most unusual. of it's nothing unusual. We're about to find an eel which normally lives in here. We found a baby one last time we were here. It's really heavy. No, he's not there. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's normally around that big. Cool. He's a cutie. And why are we doing that? To get all the ear pockets out. Yeah, good listening. Well done. All right, guys, I'm going to do your wee quiz. Why are we planting the flax here by uh, the stream? So it's, it can give like creatures in the water shade and all keep the water cold through summer and winter. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And also a little bit of habitat for them to hide under. Yeah. What about if you were planting in um, a stream that went through a paddock, what does the flax do then? Uh, I'll just make shade, so yep. that stuff could hide under it, and sort of like this, but a wee bit bigger. Yeah. And what about um, sediment and pollutants that might be on the surface of the paddock? Ah. Uh, what does the flax do? Can you it remember? It sort of gets rid of it. Yeah, it traps it, doesn't yeah. it? So if, you, if you've put um, nitrogen on your paddock to feed the grass and there's a little bit of surplus, and then that might wash off the paddock into the water, and then it's not very good for the water quality. So what the flax does is grabs the nitrogen and binds it and then feeds off it. Yeah. And so, so the nitrogen doesn't go into the water, it goes into the plant, which is where it's supposed to be. What kind of wildlife might we find in this stream? Can you imagine? Eels, uh, freshwater crayfish, cockabillies. Yep. Are those in streams near your house? Yeah. Yeah. Tadpoles. Yeah, could be. Um, Maybe in like a pool like that. This stream actually has a freshwater mussel, and it's like lives in fresh water. It's really cool. Just dig into the dirt, you'll find it. Yeah, you've seen those. Yeah. Yeah, cool.